Well, we've been talking a lot about notes and program changes and things like that, but there's, there's more to life than just notes. And I mentioned continuous controllers earlier, but let's get into that a little more heavily now. Okay. Continuous controllers are what allow you to add nuances to your music. Uh, with the foot pedal, with the mod wheel, with the pitch bend. You know, we already mentioned that. But right. the thing is that now there's more and more interest in continuous controllers because signal processors like the Quadroverb let you control parameters from continuous controllers. So you can actually, as you play different things on the synthesizer, you can change the sound of the signal processor. Okay. The MIDI specification allows for 128 different controllers. These are all stamped also with individual channel IDs. So that's 128 possible controllers on 16 different MIDI channels. Hmm. So now don't get confused just because we're dealing with numbers here. Hmm. Uh, controller 16 is not the same thing as channel 16. Okay. Controller 16 can appear over channel 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. Uh, you know, pitch bend. Each channel can have its own pitch bend data or its own volume data or its own modulation data or whatever. And these are all assigned to particular controller numbers. Okay. The reason for doing this is that there are certain standardized controllers. For example, controller number seven is what controls master volume. Controller number one is usually used to control uh, modulation depth of vibrato. Uh, controller 64 is its sustained switch. Uh, there are different standardized controllers, but there are also a whole bunch of undedicated ones so that you can set up whatever you want for your own setup. Okay. The, the way that... Uh, the basic principle of it is that you need to match up your controllers on your signal process on your keyboard. I mean, for, for right now, we'll just limit ourselves to a keyboard controlling the quadroverb. Okay. And what that means is that um, if you're, if, let, let's say you have the mod wheel on the EPS here, and it's transmitting data over as controller number one. Mm -hmm. At the quadroverb, you decide what parameter you want to have controlled by a continuous controller and you assign that to controller number one. Just like on the uh, MIDI guitar, the first string was a certain uh, channel. Mm -hmm. And so it only, would only play that certain MIDI note number. Mm -hmm. It's the same principle here. Same concept, OK. In, in other words, if you, tune a, if you set a parameter on the quadroverb to respond to controller number two, and you send controller number one information, nothing's going to happen. Right. Now, on the quadroverb itself, it's fairly easy to do this. There's a button called modulation here, okay. name and modulation. And you can press that, and you can scroll through. And what it shows you is the mod source. Here I have it set to controller number one. Okay, right. And then right after the mod source, it shows you what the target is, which I have set to reverb pre-delay. Okay. Now what this means is that when I vary the mod wheel, it will change the pre-delay. Uh, before I play that, though, let me show you. I have a second one set up. And this one responds to note velocity. So that's not really a controller per se, but it's just another strength of the MIDI specification. You, you can control things from note velocity or the key pressure or those other performance type parameters that we were talking about. So what I've done is I've set note velocity to control the amount of reverb decay. Okay. Now watch what happens. If I play the note real softly, there's not that much reverb. This is a set of timpanis uh, from the ProSonus sound library. Okay. And so it's got these, it's got different multi-samples with soft samples being different from louder samples. Now if I hit a real loud sample, what that does is that kicks the reverb decay way open. Okay. So as you play, you can go. And you can vary the amount of reverb just by how hard you hit the key. Because you have the... Uh GT set up to receive that uh, controller information. Yeah, it's set up so that the reverb decay is tracking the note velocity. Now, the way I have it set up, it's a positive correlation. In other words, the harder I hit it, the more reverb there is. I could just as easily set it up so that it goes in the other direction, and the harder you hit it, the less reverb there is. Okay. See? Not a lot of reverb on that compared to the way it was before. But if I hit it softly, you hear more of the sustain. Okay. Let's put it back to the way it was before. And let me show you th what the mod wheel's doing. In this case, 
what we've done is set up the mod wheel so it varies the pre-delay. Now there you can hear the, the reverb hits immediately with the note. Right. And I'm hitting it hard so you can hear plenty of decay. Now if I kick the mod wheel up, there'll be a delay. Okay. So that's just a real simple example of controlling two parameters from the keyboard. So I can do actual real-time performance things that affect the signal processor and affect the keyboard sound as well. Now, I don't mean to give the impression that you can only do two things at a time here. Um, the, there could be, uh, the, the quadriverb allows up to eight parameters to be controlled. So something could be tracking note velocity, another one note position, so that you would have maybe an equalization change as you moved up the keyboard. Okay. Something responding to pitch bend. Uh, like a nice effect on, on a guitar patch is as you move the pitch bend up is to bring up the amount of echo so that as you bend it gets a sort of trailing off into space effect and then when you bring the bend back down it's like right in your face. Right, okay. <laughs> that, that kind of sound. Meanwhile the foot pedal could be doing something else. So it really gives you a tremendous amount of, of latitude in terms of how you can shape your sound. You're not just limited to the programming options of the keyboard anymore. You can also make the signal processor wedded to the keyboard through the continuous controllers. That's uh, a lot of things to control, huh? You control yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> And you're not uh, restricted to two only controllers, per se, which a, a pitch bend wheel and, and a mod wheel are termed controllers. Yeah. But also uh, velocity right. can be controlled by a controller. Uh, yeah, velocity can furnish a control signal, okay. or right. so can aftertouch, or you know things that you don't normally think of as controllers, right. uh, or the, the note position. But again, I should emphasize, not all signal processors will respond to all possible controllers. The quadriverb actually happens to be very good in this respect, um, but usually in a signal processor, the, the first thing to go will be the note position velocity type things. You know, they won't respond to the notes, but they'll respond to the physical controllers like the mod wheel and the foot pedal and all that. Okay. So remember, the, the rule is, is, is just is basically very simple. Set up your signal processor, decide which parameters you want to have controlled by particular controllers, make sure their numbers match up, with the controllers you have on here, or that if you're not using a controller per se, but note velocity or something like that, you have it set correctly. Right. And of course, they need to be set to the same MIDI channel. Right. The way I have this set up right now, since I'm only driving the quad reverb with the EPS, then I just have it set in omni mode, so it'll respond to whatever's coming in. And I know what omni mode is, too. Yeah, so there you go. And that pretty much takes care of this aspect of controllers. Now the next thing I want to do is, is show how even a regular guitar player, you don't have to have a MIDI guitar, but you can take a standard guitar and have uh, a foot pedal control different parameters for your guitar, and you can even sequence controller changes. So uh, You mean a MIDI foot pedal? Yeah, MIDI foot okay. pedal and, and MIDI program change commands and all that, just with a standard guitar, and it can produce some pretty wild sounds. So let's, let's go set up our next uh, demonstration here. Let's do it. <laughs> 